Hey guys, Mr. here again for another video today, and we are back with some more Winnipeg Jets franchise mode, and uh, I am excited to get into this one. We are going to be finishing the regular season. We are hopefully going to have a little bit of a stronger end to the season as well. Now, I am going to make a change. Uh, yeah, I ba basically one change. So, uh, yeah, we'll figure out, <laughs> or I'm going to show you guys that in a second. So, Obviously, Shifley is doing pretty good. He's our leading point getter or point holder, point scorer. I don't know. <laughs> He's our leading point getter, I guess, currently with a record. And our team record is 27-18-6, which gives us the fourth place spot in the standings in the Western, uh, what is this, Central Division? Yeah, Central Division. There we go. It's right in front of me, literally blind. All right, <laughs> All right so Nashville... They are six points behind us, but they are also three. Or they have three games in hand as well. So realistically, they could be uh, in the exact same position as us. But uh, to be honest, since they are also in a wild card spot, and since we have two wild card spots in our division, I would really like to uh, definitely win this next game against Vegas because if we win this game, we have one game in hand in St. Louis, or one game, yeah, one game in hand against St. Louis, and if we do win this game. We will be ahead of St. Louis, so that's a re it's a really big win here. It's starting to get towards crunch time, and we're going to definitely need to start getting some Ws here. So I'm going to see. We are about a month away from uh, from uh, the trade deadline, so I am going to make a trade now, maybe a little bit early, but does it really matter? I'm trying to improve the team as soon as possible. So I'm going to show you what the problem is. I've been looking at our lines, and basically, our top three lines have all been plus. So in the last episode, this is how the lines were looking. And uh, we'll just look. So Patrick Laine, plus six. Mark Shifley, plus six. Nikolai Ehlers, plus seven. Yarmir Yager, plus ten. Little, plus seven. Wheeler, plus ten. Perot, plus two. Lowry, plus one. Dano, plus two. And our fourth line, Armia, minus one, which isn't too bad. Uh, but Patan a minus eight and Matthias a minus eight. So yeah, so obviously one of these two are going to be getting uh, getting out of the team. It's going to be between Matthias and Patan. Now what I'm going to do, even though Patan brings in more points, uh, to be fair, Matthias has a better shooting percentage and also has better defensive stats. So we we're so what we are going to do, we are going to sit Patan. Uh, we're going to scratch him, but we're going to make a trade, which realistically, I don't know how I'm going to make this trade. Maybe it might be Patan going in the trade, because I was looking at sending away Matthias for this player, but realistically, I want to make our team more better, better defensively, so I think realistically the way to do that, it would be to send away. Uh, where, where, where? Not Matthias, freaking Patan. Yeah, I mean, Patan has a lot of value, though. He does have a lot of value. He is 22. I really don't want to give up on Patan. But then again, is it Matthias, uh, the odd man out? What is our decor looking like right now? We've got, let's just sort it by overall. I'm not going to. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, you know what? Chariot can be the one to go. So Chariot, or Chariot, I still don't know, is going to be going to the Chicago Blackhawks in exchange for, hopefully it's just a one for one. Uh, we're still looking at defenseman, my bad, I was so confused, I'm like, where is he? For uh, Lance Booma. So Lance Booma, I know he is listed as a fourth liner, he's on the last year of his deal, but his defensive stats are really, really, really good, and he's also listed as a fourth liner which is also really, really good. Now, he's on a pretty poor uh, Chicago team. He's not here to get points, though. He's here to play defense. I mean, his contract isn't bad, really. And then I'm really hoping he just does well for us. So we'll try this one for one. Uh, it might go through. Not too short. Trade accepted. All right. Well, that was a lot easier than expected. So just a simple one-for-one -one trade a month or so before the deadline. Uh, I mean, it's not definitely not the biggest of trades. So what we are going to do is we are going to make some roster moves. We are going to send uh, send down P 
Batan. Where? Should we send down Batan? No, I think we'll send down Hendrix. So we'll send down Hendrix. Batan will be our extra forward. Hendrix will go on waivers. I mean, if someone claims him, I would be shocked. Yeah. All right, so no one did. But, uh, yeah, so let's go and edit some lines now. Nick Batan will be the one to sit, like I said, but I'm okay with it because Booma looks extremely good defensively. If I could just freaking get him in the team, there we go. All right, so let's see. Ah, it's going to go back up to... Oh, wait, come on. Come on, game. There we go. All right, who's got the best face-offs? Matthias does. I do still want to change this up, though. Does Dano have better face-offs? No, he does not. All right. Uh, like I said, I was going to make a line change like this as well. Perot's going to start playing on the second line with Lowry, Little, and Booma on the third line. And then Dano, Armia, and Matthias on the fourth line. Defensive core not changing at all. Still looking pretty damn good, though. Uh, I'm hoping Mason continues to do how he is doing. 924 save percentage by no means is bad. But the backup of Hellebuck has not been good. So maybe maybe we should switch out Hellebuck. But then again, I don't want to because if he gets pissed, because he is listed as a starter, if he gets pissed, that's just not going to go over well. So I think we'll keep Hellebuck for now. If he can start getting some points, though, when he is playing, that would be very much... Uh, or I'd be very okay with that. So now... 27 18 and 6 we need to win this vegas game i know they're a bad team and i know it's getting pretty early to get points but this is a big win if we beat vegas we could be in a much better position and of course we lose because the game knows that it's a big game for us so yeah unfortunately unfortunately we lose there so you know what i'm gonna sim up to the deadline and uh, we'll see how everything goes. So, Dion Phaneuf, I'm still not going to give up on Lemieux. Still not going to accept that trade. 6-2 loss to the Coyotes. That is kind of upsetting. Golagoski for a second-round pick. He has four years left. Almost at a $6 million deal, though. Not going to take that. So we win over St. Louis, which is good. Because uh, now, since St. Louis is probably still ahead of us, I would like to get some W's over them, especially. That would be really, really nice. So hopefully, uh, wow, that's a big trade. Johnny Boychuk and Josh Bailey for our first and second. First of next year, second of this year, and Brennan Lemieux. Like I said, I do not want to give up on Brennan Lemieux. I won nothing lost to the Rangers. We couldn't even get a point, which kind of sucks. We were literally just losing, then winning, then losing, then winning. Another trade, <laughs> Josh Bailey, Thomas Hickey, Dennis Seidenberg for our first this year, and Jack Roslevic. Again, I'm going to decline it, and we lose to Colorado in regulation. We got a shootout win against Florida, LA, shootout loss. I mean, we're at least on a point streak, which has not happened in a long time. And another loss there to St. Louis, Goligoski again. Still not going to accept the trade. We lost to St. Louis, like I said. But we did win against Dallas, who I would assume is probably still the leading, uh, or the team that is leading the division. So now let's see. At the deadline, where are we? Uh, I'm scared, to be honest. I hope we're at least in fourth still, so we are. Um, I mean, we have a game in hand against St. Louis, but we're still three points behind them. Wow, Minnesota actually took off, and Dallas started to slow down. Dallas only had two wins in that sim, which is very surprising, that's for sure. Now, I mean, really, we just need to go on, even if we go on a five-game win streak, which is not a huge win streak, a five-game win streak would be very, very good. It would be much needed. I am not going to lie. So... That's, I don't know what to do. Like, I mean, <laughs> what is there to do? Let's see. I mean, I'm not too worried about the points of Boomer, but let's see. How has he done? He's gotten a few points. Still uh, in the minus. But, uh, I mean, wow, he's gotten a lot of penalty minutes since he came here. He had like 26 or 28 since we traded for him a month ago. How is the fourth line doing? Are any of them complaining about ice time? 
I haven't been complaining about ice time of late, so that's good. Now, how do I feel about the second line? How have they been performing? I think Perot has started to slow down. Um, well, wait, eight and twenty-four for Perot. Little nine and twenty-two. So really, Perot has one more point. So realistically, I think I might keep him there. Now, who's getting who's getting the most points? Dano has twenty-four. Uh, Armia has 27, so you know what? Armia is going to get switched with Booma. Not that. All right, so Armia and, and Booma will get changed around. We're just going to make one little line change there. Is Wheeler still complaining about ice time? He is. I thought I put him back on the first line, but I think I might have just done that on the power play. Uh, all right, well, that makes our first line realistically better on paper, but... 21 goals for line A, only 41 points. Shifley's doing good. He's got 50 points. 40 points for Wheeler. Yager is doing really good, 38 points. Uh, Perot is doing good at 36. Yeah, 30, no, 32 points, sorry. Nikolai Ehlers doing good at 37 points. Adam Lowry at 27. Little 20, no, 30, not 20. I meant 31. Yeah, 31. All right, trying to do math right now, guys. So uh, 27 for Armia, 10 for Booma, Mathia. All right, well, I'm, you know, I'm done looking at forwards. Actually, Dano, I just checked, but yeah, okay, 24 points. Now let's go check the defense. Truba, not a lot of points. Bufflin, not a lot of points, man. We need a defenseman that can get points. Like, I mean, 18 points for... Uh, Truba isn't bad, and then 20 points for Bufflin, it's not bad. But realistically, I'd like at least 30 to 40. At the end of the season, I would like 40 to 50 points by one of my top two defensemen. Then Morrissey, he only has 10. Myers, he only has 7. Enstrom only has 8. And Depre only has 3. So we really just aren't getting any help. On the decor offensively, still a 924 save percentage for Mason. Uh, Hellebuck uh, brought up his stats, which is good, but he's still, <laughs> well, he's actually gotten some wins since we made the trade with Boomo, which is good. But uh, do I want to make a trade now for a better defenseman offensively? Does that make sense? I think so. Uh, let's go to the starting lineup. Defenseman, I mean, it would probably be Depre. Depre is a defensive defenseman. But you know what? I'm I don't feel like I should make a trade. I feel like I should just sim and hopefully everything works out. So you know what? We'll try it. We'll sim ten games. Yeah, we'll go with ten games and then we'll see didn't mean to go there. We'll go with ten games and then we'll see where we are at. So Shifley overall is doing pretty good. I would kind of like a more offensive, uh, or some some of our players getting more offensive points. But I mean, I don't know what else we could do. There's not there's nothing I can really do. So, all right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we'll sim up to this LA game in a month. So we lose to Nashville in regulation which means they could be ahead of us now. A shootout loss to Detroit. This Carolina game is big. I'd like to at least get a point from it. If we don't even get two, I might be a little upset. I'm not going to lie. Um, but come on. like it's, it's All right. Well, we got two points from them. Then we lose to the Rangers. We lose to the Devils. We win in a shootout to Philly. We lose to the Cavs. We lose to the Preds again. A shootout loss to the Blackhawks. Uh, I honestly just don't know if we will make the playoffs this year. Uh, I mean, it's not looking too good, to be honest with you. We are now in the last wildcard spot. Well, this is very bad. This is really, really bad. If we look at our calendar, how many ga are the rest of the games against Western Conference teams? Uh, I mean, other than Boston and Toronto, actually, well, we go on a bit of an Eastern Conference uh, road trip. 
so you know what we'll have to get some wins here but this next game against nashville that we play we have to win that one if we want to at least get in a spot uh to ensure us getting in the playoffs but uh right now the main focus is making it into the playoffs let's go check the stats of uh the central so central we are in fifth with 77 points is not very good uh and then in the what is it pacific yeah in the pacific all right so anaheim's only one point behind us so this next anaheim game we are where we have we need to beat them as well or else we could lose out on our wild card spot which would be very bad so we need to win uh so we need to go on at least a three game win streak throughout these next four four or five games really if we can win these next three games i would be extremely happy with that because we need to get points uh, i mean la is a good team they're doing good but anaheim must win nashville must win so we'll sim up to the boston game let's see against la we win in regulation that is huge anaheim at least get a point god damn it nashville we need to at least get a point here, guys. Please, 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 please. Can we at least get a point? 4-2 regulation loss. My God. Uh, what are, where are we? There's no way we still have this wild card spot. Anaheim's had to have taken it back. We, yeah, we're, we're out right now. We are out. We have 79 points. And I mean, unless we get, if we miss out on a game without getting, or if we, for the rest of the season, for the rest of the seven games that we have to play, if we don't get a point in at least six of them, we are more than likely not going to make it. And let's go check the Pacific. So Anaheim has 80 points. We had, what, 79? So we have 79. So, okay, so this game against Chicago they aren't the best team they uh they only have five games left so please 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 can we beat the Chicago Blackhawks here I know it is in like three days so we got the Boston game first let's see can we beat Boston advance a day please come on it's 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 taking a while to sim come on a 4-2 loss no, well, but we're back in a wild card spot somehow. Oh, wait, no, it's a 4 2 win. I didn't even realize. Okay, that makes so much more sense. I didn't even see. I just saw the 4 2. I didn't even see the W. All right, well, that is good, which means we are in a wild card spot again. We'll advance a day again uh, up to the Chicago game. Will uh, Anaheim take the wild card spot back? They will not. All right, well, this is a huge game. I know they're basically out of the playoffs now, but still, we need to ensure a point here. Please, at least get a point. Come on, against Chicago, we win 5-1. to one. All right, and we are now tied for points against Nashville. We are looking much better now. Uh, if we can go on at least a three-game win streak here, that would be nice. We need to at least get a point here against Toronto. We'll sim a day. Come on, please. At least get one point from them. They're a really good team. And we actually get two points from them. We get a shootout win, and we get the three-game win streak I wanted. So I'm glad we start pouring it on now. That is very good. 85 points now. Uh, we'll sim this back-to-back -back against Ottawa and Montreal. And then we'll sim up to the Calgary game. We'll see. How do we do? Can we get a? Can we at least get two points against the two of them? Oh, well, let's just get four points, and let's also hit 40 wins on the season. Holy, what a time to clutch up. Oh, my. Well, this is going a lot better than I had planned it to. We are now in third, and we have clinched a spot. We, Nashville hasn't gotten a point in a couple of games, but, man, wow, Dallas, did they ever fall? And we are now tied. We are in a position to get second 
in the division after not even being in a playoff spot at five five what was it five six games ago wow all right well that's really good so you know what i'll sim the uh last two games of the season at this point i don't even care i mean if we could go out or if we go to the playoffs on a high note that would be nice and we do all right so we went on what a seven point streak seven game point streak one two three four five six seven yeah seven game point streak we finish off the season with a record of 41 and 41 basically 41 31 and 10 so overall that was huge and then wow well we actually managed to finish uh fourth but overall only a one point difference between second and fourth and third and fourth were tied at 92 points which uh interesting that's for sure now we'll advance a day and we'll check some stats who will we be facing in the playoffs i would assume it would be minnesota which could be kind of scary and i would like i said i would assume they did clinch the conference which is definitely scary and no we actually face la um what <laughs> why are we facing la why wouldn't we be facing minnesota we were the fourth seed uh, well then again, I mean, it doesn't always go by our division, so it must have been uh, throughout all the eight seeds. I'm confused. Uh, so yeah, really, I would assume we would have gone against uh, Minnesota. Let's check the Western Conference. So the Kings finished second. We finished fifth. Why the fuck are we going up against the Kings? Like It should have been us against Minnesota. Should have been the Kings against uh, San Jose. It should have been Edmonton against Vancouver. Should have been Dallas versus St. Louis. What the hell? I mean, that is really weird. All right. Well, I don't know how I feel about that. I was not prepared for that. I was prepared to go up against the conference-winning Minnesota Wild. I mean, I don't know how much easier this will be, if it'll be any easier at all. But uh, it should be very interesting. So we had the fifth seed in the west how did the east finish pittsburgh in first toronto in second both at 108 points so pittsburgh had one more point than uh the minnesota wild so they will win the president's trophy they have more regulation plus overtime wins as well new york in third with 104 columbus with 103 tampa with 100 so five teams in the east make the playoffs with over 100 points or 100 points or more Ottawa was, was not too far behind with 98, Detroit with 97, and 94 to Buffalo. So if we check out the entire league, the President's Trophy will go up uh, or will go to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, in second, Toronto, the Western Conference champions, the Minnesota Wild. Well, regular season-wise at least. Uh, where do we finish? We finished 13th in the league, which overall, that's not too bad. Uh, it's definitely... Uh, pretty, well, I mean, how's to say it's definitely pretty decent, which, yeah, to be fair, it's pretty decent. So, Florida finished worst in the league with 63 points, 72 points to Vegas, and 75 points to Colorado. Those are the bottom three. So, now let's see, how do we do in the entire league? We finished with um, a final record of 41, 31, and 10, which isn't too bad. We had a 56.1 point. Uh, point per game point yeah point percentage i guess uh goals for 222 how good was that um not very good to be honest uh goals for per game i would assume also wasn't very good let's see we're like in the middle of the league 271 is not too bad goals against average uh, or no sorry just goals against let's see where are we uh, we actually finished uh, a little bit above the heights. What are we like top 12, top 11 uh, in the league for least goals against allowed, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty pretty good. <laughs> pretty good is what I tried saying. Goals against per game, uh, basically the same spot. Actually, it is the same spot. Sot spot. Shit me, I can't speak. Uh, power play, our power play was one of the worst in the league. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm not even going to check total power plays. So what was our power play percentage? It must have been pretty poor. 
Um, well, actually, we're about middle of the league. Uh, wait, what? Oh, no. Uh, wait. <laughs> wow. So the power plays must have just been down this year. Like, we did not have a lot of power play goals, but we had a 20% power play percentage. That is weird. Shorthanded goals against. Uh, looks like we were pretty good on the penalty kill. Yeah, middle of the league as well. Uh, power play goals against. Wait, no, that's how many shorthanded goals we checked. All right, so yeah. Power play goals against. How many times? Uh, looking like we are in the middle of the league. And Oh, no, we were actually pretty high up. So our penalty kill was not very good. Uh, yeah, 80.4% is pretty bad. That's like top 12 worst in the league. Although, to be fair, the Pens, the Pens who were or who won the President's Trophy this year only had an 80.2 penalty kill percentage. Weird. Uh, sh Short-handed goals I'm not too worried about. Who had the best home ice record in the league? Pittsburgh, 30-10-1. Uh, How do we do at home? Where are we? Uh, let's see. We did 19-16-6, and six, which isn't too good, and we did 22-15-4 on the road, which is a lot better. Uh, so Toronto was really good on the road. Pittsburgh was really good on home ice. Uh, who had the best last 10 games? Toronto went 9 0 at 1. We had a pretty good one. 7 2 and 1 is definitely not bad. We did go on a 7 game point streak, so that was really good. Now let's check some of the player stats. We'll see how our team did. 64 points for Mark Shifley, Patrick Line with 57 not too bad just missed out on 30 goals Shifley just missed out on 20 goals I would have liked for them to each have gotten one more goal but it's fine it's not that big of a deal Yager coming in third so he actually brought in a lot of scoring for us so am I ever glad we managed to uh get him or we, we managed to sign him that's really good Nikolai Ehlers uh up to an 85 he was an 84 now with 53 points, does Sh or did Line or Shifley grow? I don't think so. Wheeler with 52 points, 20 plus goal season for him. Little with 48 points, Perot with 44, Lowry with 40, not too bad. Armia with 35, not too bad. Bufflin was our uh, most point or most prolific point getting defenseman. That was quite a mouthful uh, at 31 points, which isn't too bad. Marco Dano with 28, Truba with 25, Matthias with 22, Patan with 15, Buma with 13, Myers with 11, Morrissey, and Shum Depre. So basically our bottom four in the bottom four for points. So overall, the only minus players we had was our fourth line of Matthias, Patan, and Buma. So our fourth line was getting ripped to shreds. Yager had the best plus minus. Most goals also, or no, I was going to say most goals also goes to Yager, but never mind. Goes to Line A on the team. Pretty good. 29 isn't that bad. 22 points, or 22 goals, sorry, each, uh, or for each Wheeler and Yager. Most assist goes to Shifley with 45. So Shifley just is a beast. Let's check out the goal tending. Uh, Mason. So Steve Mason. He didn't do too bad. 85. Overall, he didn't dip or didn't grow at all, so that's kind of unfortunate. Well, I'm glad that he didn't dip, but at the same time, I mean, I don't know. Hellebuck really picked it up, though. Uh, like, he was 0-11-5, I think, to be honest. So I think, that, I think at least the last 10 games or so, he got points uh, with him in net because he didn't have a win. Uh, when I started this episode, that's really good. Over overall, he did bring uh, his point percentage up, which is good. But a 921 save percentage for Mason is not too great. 239 GAA isn't that great either. Hellebuck with a 907 and a 281. As a backup, I mean, that's under the league average. So that's overall not very good. Now, let's go check the entire league stats and we'll see what's up. Uh, in the entire league. Wow. All right. Well, let's check out the... Oh, wait. No, let's check out the entire league. Let's check out the forwards first. Steven Stamkos with 88 points on the season. Claude Giroux with 87 points. Nikita Kucherov with 85 points. Alex Ovechkin with 83 points. Bergeron and Crosby 
both with 82 points, and there were only five point per game players throughout the entire season. I think I might have to turn the injuries up because what? Oh, okay. I saw someone with 83 games played. So yeah, Henry got traded to the Bruins, so he played one extra game, but no one is getting injured. One game, Terrace missed one game, but I'm assuming it was from. Uh, that trade since he is on Tampa now again James Neal uh, he got traded to the Oilers all right interesting I did forget to check the deadline I or before the deadline I did want to see that Derek Broussard went to San Jose interesting overall so yeah let's go back to points let's see so uh definitely we aren't gonna have anybody in the top five maybe uh or top 10 sorry maybe someone maybe line a ha was high up in goals i i mean i doubt it but maybe uh top 10 so let's see in points top 10 we also have tarasenko sega kane hall and Tavares. plow just outside zetterberg had a 39 goal season Holy shit, Alex Ovechkin with 53 goals, Stamkos and Tarasenko with 43, Kane with 42, Zetterberg with 39, Van Riemsdyk with 37, Spezza with 37 too, he had a really good season, Bergeron, 36 goals for him, that's interesting, Malkin with 36, Sagan, Giroud, Tavares all with 34, Kucherov, Panarin with 33, Hoffman with 32, uh, overall, lots of goals definitely were scored by a lot of players. Nazem Kadri had a 30-goal season. Line A just outside of 30 goals uh, alongside Philip Forsberg. Interesting. Let's see. Out of curiosity, who had the most assists? Nicholas Backstrom, as you would guess. Uh, what a beast. For real, though. Marner with 60 assists as well. Pasternak with 59 assists. So, yeah, he was the playmaker this year. I know he's a, he listed, listed as a playmaker, but he just is a sniper. I mean, uh, I don't know. To be fair, <laughs> he's got really good stats in both of them. I don't know. That's interesting. Crosby with 57. Ben with 54. Who had the best pl plus minus in the league? Steven Stamkos with 39. That top line of uh, Tampa had the best plus minus. Silverberg had a very high plus minus as well. Who had the most penalty minutes throughout the year? Ryan Reeves. And Jordan Nolan, each tied at 101. Interesting. Now let's go back to uh, points, and then we'll see uh, the defenseman. So Brent Burns finished off the season with 68 points. Carlson, not too far behind. Very close far behind, actually, with 67. Doughty with 66. Petrangelo with 64. I think that is most definitely a career high for Alex Petrangelo. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, actually, to be fair, he had a 51-point season in his second year. So overall, I mean, Petrangelo's actually been a pretty damn good defenseman throughout his entire career, point-wise. Kind of had an off off year in 2016, but I mean, other than that, he's been pretty good getting points. So yeah, St. Louis is lucky to have him. I'm pretty sure he was drafted kind of late too. Yeah, fourth overall. I mean, he's pretty damn good. Although that 2008 draft was absolutely ridiculous. He had Carlson, who went 15th, Doughty, who went 2nd, Petrangelo, who went 4th, and then I believe Stamkos, I believe Stamkos went 1st. Yeah, Stamkos went 1st in, er, in the 2008 draft. That 2008 draft is honestly crazy. But, uh, yeah, most goals, I would assume, goes to Burns with 20. What the fuck? Jason Garrison uh, 23 points, a minus 24, but had 20 damn goals as a, de as a defensive defenseman. What the fuck? <laughs> well, <laughs> Dustin Bufflin, not too, he was top three for defenseman goals, which isn't too bad. Uh, 18 goals for him. Who had the most assist? Saw 52 for someone, uh, but yeah, 57 assist for Doughty. 92 overall, man, Jesus. He's a higher overall then uh, Carlson, too. Interesting. Uh, all right. Who had the best plus minus as a defenseman? Nikita Zaitsev with 35, or with plus 35. And I wonder, who was he playing with? Maybe Hainsey? Oh, God. Well, I would assume so, since Hainsey had a plus 27. Most penalty minutes for a defenseman. Holy shit. Mark Borowitzki with 139. Uh, <laughs> wow. 
Now let's go check the goalies, and we'll see who did the best in the league. Most wins goes to Frederick Anderson playing 73 games. Uh, I would assume Craig Anderson played, oh no, Mark andre Fleury played the most games at 76. Craig, and Craig Anderson with 74, and Freddie Anderson with 73. Did I say, what, did I say 74? I honestly don't know what I just said. But uh, yeah, 73 for Freddie. Had the most wins. Uh, he, that might even be a Vesna for Frederick Anderson. Uh, it's between Lundqvist and um, freaking Freddy. Yeah, it's definitely between Lundqvist and Freddy. So, I mean, Freddy had a 926, but he also had three more wins than Lundqvist. And Lundqvist had a 928. Oh, that's interesting. So, Vesna. I must say it might go to Lunk. You don't know. No, I think Frederick Anderson might get it. Either way, that's pretty interesting. That's kind of cool. Now let's see. Rookie skaters. Who uh, who will win this? What is this even called? Calder, yeah. Uh, 48 points for Dylan Strom. Holy shit. Uh, Clayton Keller with 45. Sebastian Aho with 44. So I would assume it goes to Dylan Strom. Overall, that's a pretty damn good rookie season. Brock Besser with 35, Nolan Patrick with 29, Nico Hischier with 27, Tyson Jost with uh, 26, White and Verona with 25. Who had the most goals? Definitely Keller. Keller had a 23-goal season in his rookie year. That is pretty good, plus minus. Uh, Mikhail Sergachev with a plus 14, most penalty minutes, also Sergachev. Damn, is there a rookie goalie that will take it away from Strom? Most definitely not, Laurent. Brossois is not very good. So, guys, I'm going to end the episode here. Uh, as I literally went through all of those stats in about 12 minutes. And I am very sorry about that. I did not, 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 not expect to take that long. I am extremely sorry about that. Man, I don't know how I do it, but I drag these episodes on without even trying to. So, you know what, guys? Uh, we'll be back in the next episode, in episode 4, I believe. Wait, this is episode 3, I'm pretty sure. So we'll be back in episode 4 to face the LA Kings in the first round of the playoffs, 2017-2018 season. I'm excited. Thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.